This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. As I browse the headlines from around the influencer marketing industry this weekend, something I do daily to keep up with all of the things, I stumbled upon another of those top influencer lists. Now, we've covered my disdain for them before. The episode that published on September 20th of 2021 said it was time to do away with them. Alas, the content managers for many of the software companies still publishing them don't listen to influence, or maybe they do and just don't listen to my advice, which I begrudgingly understand. But I found one from Isia, a company I love and have worked with before. Ted Murphy, its founder and CEO, was the first guest on this podcast when it reshaped to become Winfluence. But it caught my attention because it was ripe for another of my criticisms of how many people think of influencer marketing. The post was called Top 10 Basketball Influencers. I'll tell you why I was leery of reading it and why I was pleasantly surprised when I did in today's commentary. Before we get to that, let's explore a bit more about how one brand uses Tagger. They are our presenting sponsor and a complete influencer marketing software suite that allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. We've been talking to TJ Ferreira, the co-founder of Bubs Naturals, a health supplements company, about the various ways he uses Tagger. So you you love the uh, ability to kind of pull data and analyze your influencers. I would imagine then that that probably uh, informs the the measurement and knowing what you get out of a campaign at the end, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there is there is post campaign measurement that we have, and we check in on that um, quite often as we're running our monthly campaigns for branded content, etc. Um, we also have a number of metrics on the back end because obviously we're placing ads against that. We're looking for true ROAS, uh, true first time buyers, you know, repeat buyers. What is it? What does the retention rate on LTV look like if it's a warm, if it's a warm ambassador or a warm influencer? Um, but from the front end, in terms of ease of use and quick and process, it streamlined all the data collection, all the decision making, and you know, again, truncated it to days opposed to a week and a reach out and everything else. So it's it's a more all inclusive for us. And then instead of tying three systems together, and those systems could have been Google Sheets and Instagram and you know and Facebook, and just having a human piece of those data points together, it really streamlines all of that. Thanks to TJ and to Bubs Naturals for sharing their use of Tagger. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for you, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash Tagger. And it's the holiday season and I'm in a giving mood. I've been recommending a handful of influencer marketing podcasts to you here each week on the show. Now I want to ask you to recommend some to me so that I can make those recommendations to your fellow listeners. If you have a good influencer or influence marketing related podcast in your queue, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com and share that. So in 2022, I can start sharing more great shows. And as a follow on to last week's request, I'm especially interested in those hosted by or focused on people of color. The podcast directories are helpful, but don't always surface every show. I know there are more out there. Help me find them, won't you? Why the top 10 basketball influencers post on Isaiah made me cringe, then smile. That's next on Winfluence. There it was in my feed. The headline read, Top 10 Basketball Influencers. I could almost predict what the story would say and probably fire off a good percentage of the 10 influencers listed. At least I thought I could based on what I've seen from the various software companies and media sites that churn out those headlines to try and attract backlinks and social shares because they declare 10 people better than everyone else. Hey, they work. I was once called out on a Forbes post that ranked the top 10 business leaders every entrepreneur should follow on Twitter. The other people on the list were Richard Branson, Tom Peters, Mark Cuban, 
the late Tony Shea, I had no business there, even though I would argue my Twitter activity then was pretty useful. But I've used that headline and association as validation that I know a little about what I'm talking about ever since. Still, when you're talking about influencer lists, there are two issues that make them rather useless, in my opinion. The first I covered in that September 20th episode of Winfluence called It's Time to Do Away with Top Influencer Lists. An industry thought leader isn't the same as a social media content provider. That person isn't the same as someone who has expertise and access because they work at a big brand in that industry. And that person isn't the same as a journalist in the space. None of them are the same as someone in that topic field who is a celebrity. And that leads to problem number two. Celebrities are not influencers. At least they should be classified differently, in my opinion. Sure, you can put them at the top of the hierarchy of influencers if you like. The reach of a celebrity trumps a lot of the quality content and trust you can get from some influencers. But the two reached their audiences differently. They thus have different impacts on them. An influencer, or more appropriately in this scenario, a content creator with influence, is someone who built a following on a social media network, blog, podcast, or other content platform based on the quality of the content they created and or the intensity of the engagement with their audience. A celebrity gains social media followers through some other avenue. Cristiano Ronaldo has more followers than anyone. He did not create social media content to get to that point. He's arguably the greatest soccer player alive. He's on television performing his physical feats around the world on a weekly basis, if not more frequently. Kim Kardashian is the default definition of an influencer in some people's minds. She is also, in my opinion, not an influencer. She gained her social media followers because she and her family were on a reality television show that became very popular. She was on television week after week. While there is some credit to be given to the idea that people followed her because they were seeing some version of her real life on television, she still didn't gain a single follower because they discovered her Instagram feed. They followed the star of that TV show. Celebrities bring with them audiences beyond social media. They bring them to social media as a connection point. These are fans who are probably less likely to take that person's advice on buying products and more likely to just be up to date on the goings on of that person for the water cooler talk about the show or the person with their friends. If you are older than 40 or so, think of it like this. The difference between a celebrity and an influencer is kind of like the difference between the person on the cover of the magazine, and the person who wrote the story inside about them. Or, to put it in an appropriate basketball analogy, maybe for those of you under 40, a celebrity is LeBron James. An influencer is Rick Tellender, the columnist for the Chicago Sun-Times. He's one of the best sports journalists in America. When he says something about basketball, people listen. When LeBron does, people listen to Rick Tellender's analysis of it. The point is that celebrities have less credibility than influencers in the category of trust. There are exceptions and blurred lines from time to time, of course. But in general, you're going to trust the content of someone who routinely exhibits their expertise through that content and who earned an audience because of that content rather than someone who earned an audience by being great at something else. So. I'm anticipating the top 10 basketball influencers will be some ranking of LeBron, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Giannis, however you say his name, and six other people. Maybe Michael Jordan is thrown in there as a tip of the cap to the older folks reading. Instead, Isaiah did us a solid. The list of top 10 basketball influencers were content creators who turn out great stuff about or around basketball, not celebrities who are, quote, influencers because they play basketball. The first one on the list, TCU's Patricia Morris. She's a woman who plays college basketball. There's a Milwaukee Buck star on the list, but his name is way easier to pronounce. George Hill was tabbed because he uses his platform for more important issues than sports. He speaks a lot about racial justice and equality, is a mentor for kids, and advocates for the importance of voting. Similarly, Wesley Iwundu of the Charlotte Hornets is on the list, because he's also a fashion influencer. 
There's a trash talker, a basketball skills YouTuber, and a couple of folks who post videos of acrobatic dunks too. It's actually a list of 10 influencers, content creators, who have content or a connection to basketball, not the top 10 basketball players or celebrities. Well done, Isaiah. I would still argue that Rick Tellender should be on that list, but back to my first point about these lists being irrelevant in the first place. It's hard to compare an expert NBA journalist and basketball observer to a 20-something who can cartwheel three times, then dunk one off the glass for a video. Remember, top 10 lists or lists of any top influencers are only relevant for you if you compile them based on your priorities for your business. Fortunately, I've got a handy tool that can help you do that. The Winfluence Priority Scorecard is included in my book and available as an interactive feature on my website completely free. You can use it to score the influencers you're analyzing based on reach, relevance, and resonance. Then put them in order to score your own top 10 list that meets the needs of your influence marketing campaigns. To see it and fill one out for your influence marketing campaigns, visit jason.online slash scorecards. That's jason.online slash scorecards. Have an opinion about top 10 lists? Disagree with me that celebrities shouldn't be considered influencers? Tell me more. Record a voice memo on your phone and send it to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comments on a future episode. Have a different question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence.